today I will be preaching from uh, the Epistle of James, chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. And first of all, I would like to thank God for this uh, privilege that he has given to each one of us. And also, I would like to thank our family uh, for this time that she has given to me and all the SNPC members who are present here this afternoon. Uh, I am titled my message as um, Trials and Spiritual Maturity. Uh, when we see this process, you'll see that uh, James emphasized a deep connection between trials and spiritual growth. So we all know what is trials. Trials is some kind of challenges or sufferings that we endure, that he has our faith, hope, and love. And then we experience trials in our home, at school, or at workplace. And it comes in different forms like criticism, persecution, or um, illness, or death of loved ones. So we experience it in a different form. And when we face this situation, we have two options. Give up or to fight our way out. Wow. So what we need to understand as a Christian is the battle that we fight are not for our position or status or for food or land or wealth or, or not for anything, but the stake are not silent. The winner of these battles or trials will achieve a much higher reward. That is the eternal reward. And then it is an unseen battle. Therefore, the battle that you fight will never be chronicled in a history. But then, the battle ground or the battle that we are fighting is our mind. So one of the American writers, Albert Hubbard, says that when life hands you a lemon, make lemonade, he says. So here we are fighting the battle not because trials comes in our lives and then we experience it. But we are, we are fighting it so that we would come out stronger and mature Christians. And when we see in the Bible, we see many battlegrounds. And there are many peoples who turn defeat into victory, trials into triumph. Instead of being victims, they become victors. And we can have that same experience today. And as a human being, we consider trials as great sadness, discouragement, and also great pain. But our text says that there is a reason behind our pain. There is a reason behind our suffering. And in these three verses, James gives three importance, three areas of importance in regard to trials. In the first verse, you will see how do we have the response to it. And in verse 3, you will see why we suffer or why trials come in our way. And in the fourth verse, verse 4, you will see the results of trials. So before we go into it, so we all need to God in prayer. Okay. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for today. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your protection and your guidance of us. And Lord Jesus, as someone who put your word, come to you. You forgive me, you cleanse me, and use me for your glory. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock, my redeemer. This is the same I pray. Amen. So when you see verse 2, Jen says, My brethren, come with all joy when you fall into various trials. So we say that he says, it is significant, he says, when you fall into various trials. So it is not a matter of if, but it is a matter of when do you have to face it. So there is no question that we are going to face it or not, but it is when. So we really need to get into a mindset that we are going to have trials in our life, we are going to have suffering in our lives. We, as a human being, we have a habit of thinking that our goal in life is not to get uh, any problems or any challenges, 
or any sufferings in our lives, but to go smoothly, to go well without problems. But we need this that kind of immature, unrealistic thinking because God doesn't promise us an easy life. When you say John chapter 16, verse 33, this is say to his disciples to expect tribulation in this world. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, Paul said, I was troubled on every side. So it is reasonable as a Christian to expect troubles, sufferings in our lives. And trouble or suffering is a way of life. One day we are going to get hit. We are going to get hurt because this is not happened. We are not going to get a perfect place, perfect health, or perfect circumstances while we are living here. Therefore, it is not a matter of <coughs> if, but it is a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And when you see in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, Peter said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the very ordeal among you which comes upon you for your destiny as though some strange things were happening to you, he says. So he says, don't be surprised what we are, aren't we? If anything happened to us, we question God. What happened? Why is happening to us? I'm a good Christian, we question God. But Peter says, don't be surprised because it is a way of life. And sometimes we believe that when we come to Christ, our life will be better. But that doesn't mean that our life will be easy. Because we live in a fallen world. You will see in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. And when we see the creation story in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, God created the world good, it says. It's very good, it says. But we no longer live in that paradise. Our world is affected by sin, our relationship with God, with its other, and the created other has been affected by our sins, and we are living in a world full, filled with sin. Therefore, when trials comes in our life, how do you respond to it? When it's your verse two, you see, come in all joy, James says. So James wants us to have a right attitude towards trials, that is, rejoice. You need to <coughs> uh, you need to be joyful in your suffering. Amen. So you probably heard about the story of Horatio Spafford. He was a, a successful lawyer in Chicago. And in 1871, a great fire destroyed all his property, he says. And in 1873, his wife and his daughter went for a vacation trip to Europe. And then their seat struck another seat and their seat sank. And that moment he lost his four daughters. And the story reports that Harris of Spafford wrote a beautiful hymn, It is well with my soul, while passing over the same spot of the oceans where his four daughters perished. So James is talking about that attitude. James is talking about <coughs> even though life, uh, even though uh, we are we face many problems, even though we face troubles in our lives, he he was encouraging all the believers to consider it joy, to consider it uh, consider it a pure joy, or to count it all joy. So how do we consider it? James says that James wasn't saying to be to feel joyful. He was saying to uh, think it joyfully with our thought process. You know, Christian lives um, trials or suffering comes and it destroys the Christians. It is because of the gloomy thoughts that follows. So James was telling us to think joyfully in times of trials. And in Ephesians 4, verse 11, Paul says, he learned to be contented in whatever state he was in. So trials in our lives or suffering in our lives, we can't stop coming in, coming into our lives, but we can choose to have the right attitude towards trials. 
And in Acts chapter 26, verse 2, Paul says, I think myself King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all things of which I am accused by the Jews. So when we see the verse, we can understand that he wasn't afraid or he wasn't disappointed about standing before King Agrippa to be judged. He was happy because he see it as an opportunity to testify God. He recognized God's plan and purpose in his trials. And he believed that it was God who arranged his trial. Therefore, Paul chose to, have the, to be happy in any circumstances of his, life, of his life. And it was this attitude that made him to sing praises to God in the prison. And his writing in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. So he wasn't saying that we should rejoice in our good times and in bad times we should be sad. But he was saying we should rejoice in all of our in, in all of our life, in any circumstances of our life. So this is the attitude that is needed for Christians to be uh, a victor in our lives. In order not to be a victim, we need to have that attitude to be joyful in trials or to be joyful in any circumstances of our lives. And when you see Luke chapter 28 verses 39 and 42, you will see the story of the two criminals who was hanging alongside with Jesus on a cross. And one of the criminals, you see that one of the criminals blasphemed Jesus. He said to Jesus, if you are Christ, save yourself and save us. But the other criminals on the other side started to use his mind. He considered where he was, what was his future, who he was hanging alongside him. He refused the other criminal to stop his foolishness. And he asked Jesus to remember him when he came to his kingdom. And then he he heard the most joyful words as, as sinners can possibly hear. That is, I'll be with you. I, I'll tell you the truth today. I'll be with you in paradise. So this time, this moment, the criminal used his mind in trials. And soon he caused his uh, trials to consider his cross a pure joy. Therefore, turning trial, uh, trial into triumph or defeat into victory, it depends on us. It depends on us and it depends on, on our attitude. How do you react to it? And then when you see uh, John chapter 9 verses 1 to 3, you see when uh, Jesus and his disciples were passing through, they met a man who was born blind. And when, when one of his disciples asked him, what happened to this guy, or whose sin was it that he is born blind, his saint or his parents sin? This is reply. <clears throat> it wasn't his sin or his parents sin, but he says that the work of God might be displayed through him. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to remember that the suffering that we suffer, or the trials that we encounter is not because, because of our sin. <laughs> And then what we need to know from these verses, in our sufferings, in our trials, there's a reason or there's a, there's a um, uh, purpose that is to glorify Him. So do we rejoice when we face trials in our lives? Or do trials discourage us? Or do we, th do we think that God is not concerned about us? This verse says that we need to rejoice when we fall into temptation. When we fall into trials, it is because there is a purpose behind our trials. And then when you see verse 2, verse 2 says that knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So you see the reason of for trials here. It says that it produces patience or it produces endurance. So James wants us to know that there is a purpose. There is a purpose and, there, uh, and God has a plan. So 
The believers need to recognize God's plans and purpose, God's plan and purpose in our trials. And then uh, the reason why or the reason why suffering comes in our lives or the reason why God sent trials in our ways because he wants us to have patience or he wants us to produce endurance in our lives. And so, mm, endurance or patience is a mark of maturity. And it says that it is a foundation upon which success is built. So without trials, uh, or without endurance, or without patience in our lives, we are not going to have success in Christian, Christian life. Christian life. So God wants us to produce endurance or patience through our trials. You know the story of Jim, um, William Carey. He was one of five in India in 1793. He worked in, in India for almost 40 years. And when uh, people who supported him sent a um, printer to support his, to assist him in his work, he and his team started printing Bible, <coughs> translating the Bible, grammars, and uh, dictionaries, I mean, dictionaries, grammars in the Bible. So they started, uh, they started trans the translation, and one day he was out of station. <coughs> the fire broke out, and everything was burned down. And when he returned, one of his colleagues in Vietnam uh, came to relay the news, and he said about the uh, dreadful fire that has uh, consumed all his work. So what was his reaction? If like this thing happens to, happen to us, how would we would react? So William Carey, without a word of despair or anger, says that he knelt down and he thank God that he still have a strength to continue, to start over that walk, to do that walk over again. So in time of trials, we need, um, uh, in times of uh, problems or in times of uh, trials in our lives, we need to have that attitude so that we could keep on going and we could succeed. And then when you see Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Therefore, trials bring out the best in us. It is not working against us. It is working for us. And it is a point of God that trials or something happens in our lives. We need to trust Him and we need to obey Him. And then when you see Job chapter 23 verse 10, Job says that <coughs> I Job says he knows the way that I take. When he tested me, I shall come forth as God, he says. From here we can understand that Job recognized the purpose of trials, the purpose of suffering in his life. So suffering or trials in our life is like a so it says that when uh, goldsmith uh, wants to separate <coughs> impurities from the pure gold, he put that gold into a furnace, melting furnace. And then when the gold is melted, he took it out, he take it out, and then he separated it because he removed the impurities from it. And then it has been said that the goldsmith kept the metal in the furnace until we could see his face reflected in that gold. So God kept us, or God put us in a furnace of suffering until we reflect his glory, or if we reflect the beauty of, of the beauty of Jesus. Amen. So God is making us stronger through trials or suffering. And when you see verse four, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, letting like your thing. So this is the result of trial. So what does God wants us to produce in our life? It says you may be perfect and complete, letting like nothing. 
Timothy, he wants perfection. He wants us to be perfect. He wants us to be like him. He wants us to transform into his likeness. So patience and endurance are ability to keep going when, when things are tough. But in the Bible, when we see, patience is not just uh, uh, it's not just a passive acceptance of what happens in life, but it is a courageous perseverance in the force in the face of suffering and difficulty. Yes. So sometimes when life is tough, when life is difficult, we want to get away with it. But then James commands us to remain there so that we would we would become perfect. We would become like Christ. And then trials doesn't last forever. We see that in first Peter chapter five verse ten. God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory. After you have suffered a little while, he says, will himself restore you and make you strong firm. So patience is produced or endurance is produced only when we go through suffering, when we experience it. <coughs> and then this suffering or this trials will produce endurance or patience in our lives. And when we come out of it, we are going to see the work of uh, God, that is the work of suffering or trials, that is perfection. We are going to be spiritually mature. So what we need to do as a Christian is we need to submit this will to accomplish this work. And God doesn't want a halfway job, but He wants a perfect work. So God's goal in our life is not to uh, be happy, to be fat, but He wants us to be like Him. And so trials in our life or suffering in our, in our lives is a vital part of the process. So we need, to, we need to understand, we Christians need to understand God's goal for us. And if many of us are honest, then we would say that. Our goal in life is just to be happy, for nothing bad to happen, and everything to go well and smooth. But that's not God wants us. God wants from us. He wants us to be like Jesus. And He knows that without going through sufferings or without trials in our lives, we are never going to get there. We are not never going to attain right perfection in our lives. But because of that, he sent trials in our lives. There's a story about a man and a couple that got a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, one day, a man found that cook could not fight. And um, he was, the man was watching that uh, cocoon. And he sees that there was a small hole opening in the cocoon. And the butterfly was struggling inside it to get out of that cocoon. So while he was observing, while he was watching that one, the butterfly was, uh, oh man, the, bu the butterfly struggled to get out, but then the butterfly couldn't get out, and he stopped. And it seems like he cannot go farther. He was like already tired, or it's like he was he already gave up. The butterfly already gave up. So. Uh, the man decided to help him. He took a pair of scissors and then he cut open the coven. So the butterfly easily came out. But then it says the butterfly had a solid body and the butterfly had small wings. The man continued to watch the butterfly, expecting that the butterfly would expand its wing and start to fly. But then it never happened. But if I spend the rest of his life crawling with a small wings and sword in the day. So the man in his kindness helped him. But what he failed to understand is the struggle was needed to get out of the cocoon by itself. Without the struggle, the butterfly would never grow into maturity. So it is the same for us. In order to grow into uh, to be spiritually mature, we need sufferings or trials in our lives so that when we come out from that, 
we would be spiritually mature. And then <coughs> we we believe that like, we have a thought like um, if people if uh, some people if they don't have any problems or if uh, people don't have uh, sufferings in life, we thought that it's a blessing. But that does not um, necessarily mean when we see in the scripture. Because in job life, God allows suffering <coughs> to order him. Therefore, the reason God sends suffering or God allows suffering in our life is to honor him or to glorify him. And then when you see Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, we see that we are called not only to believe in him, but to suffer for him. So as a Christians, our goal in life is to achieve maturity and to glorify him. Amen. Therefore, when trials come in life, we need to rejoice. We need to have a right attitude and response to it, so that we would be able to, uh, would be able to, we would be a victor. I mean, in this battle, in this Christian life, and then we need to recognize that there is a purpose or there is a reason behind something. And when you see verse five. When is you verse 5, if you like wisdom, let him ask God. So, when suffering comes in our lives, let's ask wisdom from him so that we will understand his purpose. We will understand God's purpose, I mean, in our suffering. Because our text makes it very clear that suffering will make us stronger, our suffering will you know, conform us to the image of Christ. Thank you. And may God bless you all.